Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop. And what I'm doing this week for my weekly fly tying video uh, for the 12th of February 2020 is Will Dornan's um, Micro Water Walker in the peanut color. And this was actually uh, my number two or number three hopper last season. Uh, and this particular color combination was my top color combination for hoppers of any kind last year. I'd actually dethroned the pink and uh, peach colored bob hoppers, if you believe it. But uh, this is a really, really hot hopper pattern, both in this version and in the uh, the kind of larger version, which is, is very similar, but it's tied on a long shank hook. And what it essentially is, is a chubby Chernobyl that isn't quite so ostentatious and chubby. So it kind of pushes that same button, but it's a little bit more technical. Um, floats great, obviously, a lot of foam on here, and it's just a little different than uh, than your chubby Chernobyls, and so it's a good, it's a great bug for fish that have just been seeing too many chubbies. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. My hook is going to be a Kumoto K100W in size 14, and this is a, um, this is a, uh, as you can see here, a wide gap straight eye dry fly hook. If you don't have one of these, I would say go with a short shank nymph hook. Uh, like a wet fly hook in the same size, maybe maybe even upsize it one. Um, and then you can do these in 12 through 16, and they, they do come out a little bigger than you would expect given the uh, the hook size here. And uh, the, I do think having a, either a wide gap hook like this one or just a short shank hook and maybe upsizing it a little bit will uh, really makes a difference in the flotation of this fly. Um, it, rather than using a uh, you know a standard gap dry fly hook because then the the metal of that uh, like the barb is closer to the center of the fly and so it's going to tend to flop on its side more. Having this big chunk of metal underneath the fly will help it roll and uh, keel correctly and also I think probably helps uh, helps hooking percentages. Now my thread there is six aught in light brown and then my body on this fly, kind of my underbody, is going to be Dave Whitlock SLF dubbing in brownstone uh, and you can certainly use any other kind of blend you know brown or brown acrylic or rabbit mixed with uh, pheasant tail ice dub for example would be very close to this and I, i'm going to start that dubbing just kind of an eye width behind the eye and i intentionally made that thread base you know a little more than an eye width back from the eye on purpose and you'll see why that's going to help me not crowd the eye later on and given that this is a straight eye hook that's pretty important so i'm going to wrap that dubbing back and go pretty far down the hook shank actually here and then kind of return that to just where that hook shank gets level and uh wrapping the dubbing in two layers like this actually helps get a relatively tight body and actually helps bind things in uh, that's why i'm not just doing a single layer of dubbing there now my body on this fly is going to be kind of a mustard colored foam strip that i i uh, cut using a uh, river road cutter i'm doing these production for my my client use this summer um if you can just trim that i mean certainly a, just a squared off uh, strip of foam that's trimmed at the corners would work just fine for that. Now here is that that foam. Uh, I've seen this one time. I can't remember what brand it is. I have never seen it since. If you find this particular shade of kind of mustard yellow, uh, buy all of it and I will buy the sheets off of you because it's uh, great stuff. The, uh, the actual production tide flies are a little paler than this. Uh, they use a, a slightly different shade of yellow. I really really like this kind of dark dirty yellow um, color here and I just I can't find it anymore and so that's one reason I'm only doing these for my clients rather than for uh, wholesale production because I, I only have you know a few hundred flies worth left of that and I can easily go through that in a couple seasons but anyway I'm going to come in here and take the pointy end of the foam there and I want that uh, almost a shank length back of the hook there I'm going to tie that in and you can be kind of profligate with your thread wraps here on the back end of the fly. At the front, you really can't. Um, now my body on this fly is going to be, I'm sorry, my legs on this fly are going to be um, amber colored size small Montana Fly Company barred sexy floss. And so like that. And what I'm going to do here to tie that in is I just grab both ends of that and I've pre-trimmed these to length. And what I typically do is actually, you know, I need four legs on this fly, and so I'll, I'll grab four strands of the material and then trim four, set those aside, trim another four, set those aside. That way, even with uh, 
you know, if I might have variation from fly to fly in the uh, leg length, but I won't have any within the fly. You know, assuming I want the legs to all be the same length. All right, so I've tied that in, and then those legs are going to tend to, like on that side, you can see they, they kind of went together like that. One way of helping with that sometimes is to go and kind of crisscross around it. Didn't really help that time, uh, but I'm going to get some more dubbing here, and that'll split those just fine. And again, the second layer dubbing is, is the same stuff as the first. I'm going to come in here and just make a couple turns to hopefully separate that dubbing a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to back up there and retie that, that leg because I don't like how that looks. And what happened there is the, those, these legs kind of have a natural curvature, and that time, um, that curvature on that one is pretty strong, and it was enough to kind of make them crisscross. And so what I did there is I just turned the leg around, and so it's flaring the opposite direction, and that's, that's actually how I want that. That leg kind of rolled on me there. And some, you know, depending on the uh, where on the, the, the uh, hank of legs you are, or how the legs are folded in the, in the bag, that'll be a bigger or smaller problem. Um, and if you're using a different rubber leg material, particularly uh, one reason I like to use silicone legs is that that trick where I was trying to do that didn't work, where I went and made a wrap on the opposite side of the leg, that almost always will straighten it out. So what I did there is I kind of, I did finally dub over that remaining chunk of the hook shank, but hopefully you can see here, I've actually got a little notch right there that I haven't dubbed over yet, and that's because that's where all of my remaining thread wraps are going to be. So, this, uh, this fly does like to be anchored to the hook shank. Um, it's going to tend to wobble if I don't, that foam's going to tend to wobble if I don't anchor it. And so I'm going to come in here and just put some super glue on the bottom of that, that uh, foam strip and then just pull it down and kind of mash that to the to the dubbing. While I'm doing that, I'll make make a quick thread wrap there. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my other rubber legs here, and this is kind of a pain in the butt to, to do it in this order, but I'm going to grab my other rubber legs and, or I guess these are actually uh, spandex, but anyway, I'm going to tie in the other pair of those Again, just like I did the first pair. And the reason I'm doing these uh, now rather than after I tie in the wing is uh, just to get more thread wraps around those. The, uh, the legs sliding out tends to be the, the part of the fly that's the biggest pain in the butt. Okay, so got those in there. And, and I didn't use a lot of thread wraps yet on those because every thread wrap I do from here on is also going to, to go over those. My underwing on this fly is going to be root beer midge size crystal flash. And I've got six strands of it there. I come in, I'm going to tie that in, just kind of mash that to the top of the body with my thumb there, and then just again, just a couple thread wraps there. And uh, usually you'll see that tied in using the loop method where you loop it, you have three strands and you loop them over. I don't really like that for wings on flies um, because I, I have a feeling it, it tends to pull out. And I'll do it for tails and things, but. Uh, I'd rather tie it in like this, and you see there's a little um, nub of those crystal flash strands there, and I'm going to wind up putting some super glue in there, and that's going to really anchor those to that foam. Okay, and then my overwing is going to be one mil, or if you can find it, half mil um, razor foam, and this is one mil foam I'd bought on uh, you know 30 sheets of it or something in uh, on Amazon. I found some some real thin foam on Amazon. The uh, razor foam from your your local fly shop would be comparable, um, and also a little thinner usually. But I'm going to take that and I, yeah, this is kind of a cream color, and uh, I actually cut that using a paper cutter. Um, you know, that's a crazy fly tying tool as I paid 60 bucks for a heavy duty paper cutter. But because I tie so much with foam, it was worth it for me. For you, just do, you know, use it, use scissors. But I'm going to double that over like that. And then um, I like to get one end of it to the length I want. And then the other end I'll just leave long. And it doesn't really matter which end is which. I'm going to come in here then and get that where I want it. And that's still too long. This is certainly a little bit fussier of a fly to tie, there we go, than, a, uh, than the uh, standard chubby Chernobyl, but 
I, uh, I did much better on this pattern, particularly you know in August when the water was starting to get low, than I did on any chubby Chernobyl. And for a while, it was actually working better than my bob hopper. Um, I think I think people started using them enough that later on in the summer, the bob hopper in this color combination started working better. Um, but uh, it's a great bug. I mean, I just you know for a lot of years, about the only hopper pattern I used was my bob hopper, and then. Uh, Last year I was using this one quite a bit. So I've got that, you know, trimmed more or less to length there. It's okay if they're a little bit different length. Um, and then I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to even those out a little bit there. And then I'm going to notch both of those at the same time. And so, again, I, you know, honestly, you probably don't need to notch the ends of that, but I, you know, the original pattern called for it, so I did. Now, the original pattern right here would call for a... Uh, a uh, indicator on it and you know two big light colored foam strips there I don't think it really needs an indicator I tied one on the last uh, kind of the demo fly there I think it just mostly adds bulk um, you know I'm, this is the third one of these I tied today fourth, fourth one of these I've tied today and I'm playing around and just some of them using the uh, the indicator on some of them not but uh, I'm gonna leave it off of this one and I'm gonna come in here and make just a couple more turns of dubbing to cover up my thread wraps there and then once my thread wraps are covered I'll just make a diagonal wrap all the way to the front and then whip finish and then a couple more steps here one more haircut on this fly I'm gonna come in here and trim off that that uh, yellow foam strip just ahead of the eye there and then again wedges in the corners and then my final step is I'm going to come back in with my super glue again and I'm going to anchor the small foam strip and then the butt ends of that crystal flash to that um, to that foam strip in the front there just kind of do that and that's also going to pull that foam the yellow foam strip back from the eye a little bit make it easier to tie uh, but then I am going to come in and just be very careful here don't get it on the eye it's eye of the hook itself I'm, I did not mash that down that time but I did put a little bit more super glue in there just to uh, uh, make sure that that front end of that foam strip is anchored to the dubbing as well and then just gonna clear that eye real quick to be sure but there you have it, that is a Dornan's uh, Micro Water walk, water Walker in the uh, Peanut colorway, size 14. And that was, again, like I said, about my third or fourth best hopper last oh. season. Uh, good little bug, and you can certainly tie that you know, in much larger sizes if, uh, if you look up the uh, Dornan's Water Walker, just the general version. It's on a 3X long hook and a little different, but the tying procedure is basically the same. And uh, I think this one actually gets used a little less, which is why I like it more. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, feel free to leave a comment below.